Hello there. In this video, I'd like to talk to you about the language of the eigenvalue equation. And I'm doing this as part of my tutorial series on quantum mechanics. And in quantum mechanics, eigenvalue equations are seen very regularly. Unfortunately, however, the terminology used can be a bit loose, and this can lead to confusion. And I'd like to clear up this confusion, such that hopefully you'll be comfortable talking about and hearing about eigenvalue equations. So, let's get started. Consider the linear transformation T. And T is a matrix or a function, and it can act on a vector or a function, and move it from Rn to Rn. So, from R2 to R2, for example. Now, there are myriad possible transformations which do this. But in reality, we are only interested in a very special subset of transformations, and those which in effect scale the vector or function they act on. And these are known as, they create what is known as eigenvalue equations. So the point is, your linear transformation acts on a function or a matrix, and it gives you back the same function or matrix, but with a multiplicative constant. And if it does this, it's known as an eigenvalue equation. I've written an eigenvalue equation towards the bottom center of your screen. So what do we have? Well, we have a linear transformation t. It's going to act on a vector, which I'm going to call psi. It gives us back the same vector psi, but with a multiplicative constant lambda. Now, because we're speaking about eigenvalue equations, the norm is to add the prefix eigen onto all of the components or elements of your eigenvalue equation so that people know you're in fact dealing with an eigenvalue equation. And that's actually where a lot of the confusion comes from because people apply the, uh, the prefix and use different terms differently. So this psi here is a vector. We apply the prefix eigen and refer to it as an eigenvector of the linear transformation t. But psi doesn't have to just be a vector, it could be a function. And then we, were, we would refer to it as an eigenfunction of the linear transformation t. Probably most generally, we can refer to it as an eigenstate of the linear transformation t. Now, if you do quantum mechanics, you'll have seen Dirac notation. And in Dirac notation, we can speak of an eigenket of the linear transformation t. Now, in reality, they all mean the same thing. They all mean the state associated with your linear transformation. So, like I said, perhaps eigenstate is the most general term, but you'll hear people say eigenfunction or eigenvector. Now, when your linear transformation acts on your eigenstate, it produces the same eigenstate with a multiplicative scalar. We once again add on the prefix eigen and refer to this scalar as an eigenvalue of the linear transformation t. So, our linear transformation acts on our eigenstate. It produces the same eigenstate with the multiplicative constant known as the eigenvalue. So, let's give you some examples. In the center of your screen, we have our linear transformation in a matrix notation, 3, 2, 3, minus 2. It acts on our eigenstate, which is the column matrix 2, 1. And it produces the same state, or the same column matrix 2, 1, with a multiplicative constant 4 which is, of course, the eigenvalue. So 4 is the eigenvalue of our linear transformation 3, 2, 3, minus 2. And the column, matri the column matrix 2, 1 is the eigenstate of our linear transformation. Consider this expression here, where the linear transformation is minus i h bar d dx. It acts on the eigenstate e to the i k x, producing the same eigenstate but with the multiplicative constant minus h bar k. The known, of course, is the eigenvalue of our linear transformation minus i h bar d dx. Now, in quantum mechanics, the transformation, such as th this matrix here or this function, is actually known as an operator. And we give these a special hat to show that we're talking about transformation matrices or transformation functions. So an operator has a hat. So, consider our eigenvalue equation here. We can rewrite this using the hat operator notation. So we have p hat, 
representing this operator here, and we have p sub x as the eigenvalue. In reality, what we're looking at here is the momentum eigenvalue equation, where p hat is the momentum operator, or momentum linear transformation, and this is actually the x component of whatever we're talking about uh, in the x direction. The, uh, sorry, the x component of the momentum of what, what it is we're talking about. So let's talk about the eigenvalue equation in terms of quantum mechanics. Well, I'm sure you've seen this sort of representation before. This would be the time-independent Schrodinger equation, or in fact, it could be the time-dependent Schrodinger equation. But in this case, our operator, our linear transformation, is going to be the energy operator, and that's known as the Hamiltonian. It's H with a hat on it. This is known as a ket. And it's a special type of notation. It's called Dirac notation, and we'll talk about that in another video. But nonetheless, it is an eigenstate. So what we have here is the eigenstate, E sub n, of the energy operator. And when we act on the eigenstate with the energy operator, we get back the same eigenstate, E sub n, but with a multiplicative constant known as the eigenvalue. And the eigenvalue in this, this instant is the energy of our particular system. So this is the energy eigenvalue equation, where a moment ago we saw the momentum eigenvalue equation. Now, in reality, this E sub n here is known as a ket, and it's an abstract quantum state vector. So we speak of it as being the eigenvector of the Hamiltonian, or the eigenstate of the Hamiltonian. Another way of writing the same thing, but in a slightly different context, we, is using wave function notation. Here we have the Hamiltonian again, this time as a function of x, acting on our eigenfunction psi of x, and it gives back the eigenfunction psi of x, but with a multiplicative constant known as the energy eigenvalue. So this is the energy eigenvalue equation. Now, why somebody would use Dirac notation versus wave function notation is something for a different video. But the point is that, nonetheless, this is an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian, just like this is. But sometimes people will note the fact that psi, in this case, is a function of x. In other words, it is a spatial function, so we can call it a spatial wave function, or an eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian h. Or, like I said earlier on, probably most generally, it can be referred to as the eigenstate of h. Now, of course, we can write vectors in many ways, such as a with the arrow over it, or with a line underneath it, or with a squiggly, a squiggly superscript like this. And this notation here is quantum notation for an abstract vector. And it's known as Dirac notation, and this is known as a ket. So this would be the ket a. Here we have the ket e sub n. See my video on Dirac notation for more. So, thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and you can also visit universityphysicstutorials.com. Happy studies!